us. You've got, you got New England pride. Show us, you've got New England pride. Stand up, shout out, show us. You got New England pride. Show us, you've got New England pride. New England Pride. Hello and welcome to another episode of New England Pride TV. I'm your host, Dela Page, and this is the backbone of this show, Tina. Hi. <laughs> We'd like to let everyone know that this show is dedicated to um, someone in the community who has recently passed. He lost his battle with pan pancreatic cancer. And so we are dedicating this show to Gus Nunes, who was a, a great advocate for LGBTQ rights and part of the Worcester Pride community. So everyone will miss you very much, Gus. New England Pride TV is brought to you by the Hanover Theater for the Performing Arts, Remax Vision, Bay State Savings Bank, Safe Homes, Joseph Gonzalez Dofrain, Boston Wedding Photographer, Paul Chase in Interior Design, Nuovo Restaurant, Creative Cabinets, Dr. Frank P. Fetchner Plastic Surgery, Fallon Health, Making Our Communities Healthy, and Crown Bakery. Hey kids, thanks for sticking with us here on New England Pride TV. I'm joined now by James Duggan from QFlix USA and Christian Ray. And they are here to talk about something extremely exciting uh, to me because they have a film festival coming to the Hanover Theater. First of all, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming on and sharing this very exciting news. Now, you are the, the, are you the creator of the film festival? Are you? I am the president and producer of the festivals now. And where did it originate? It originated in Philadelphia 23 years ago. 23 years ago? Yes. It's been going for a long time. For a long time. We're the second organization you running can't, it. I was going to say, you can't tell me you were the first. No, no. You're much too young for that. Much too young. Now, you have decided to bring uh, the movie um, festival to Worcester. And I was thrilled to hear that because, give us your reasons, because I want the, our viewers at home to know why you chose Worcester. Well, the main reason was we wanted to expand Philadelphia's base. We wanted to take what we had in Philadelphia and bring it out as far as we can. And we were looking at different cities on the East Coast, and Worcester kept rising to the top. Um, I had relationships and friendships in Worcester, and um, so I was aware of Worcester and the Renaissance and arts and cultural Renaissance that was taking place. Worcester has really got some great things happening. It now. is a phenomenal city, and we're so proud to have chosen Phil um, Worcester as our second city to expand to. Now, when you chose Worcester, you got in touch with um, Christian. Yes. yes. And how did that come about? Through mutual friends of ours. Um, they were talking to me about Christian and his great performances and his great network. And um, we just had a meeting and we had a great synergy between us. And when you were approached with this, what did you think? Well, I think for myself, um, it had been a while that since I had kind of been involved in community programs um, and raising awareness for the LGBT community. Um, so I was really excited when James sat down with me and told me what he was trying to do and it was something that I felt like I could put my name behind and it would b benefit the community here in Worcester and give us another um, reason for community members to come here and it would be a positive um, impact. Absolutely. Just, just the idea of the festival coming here is a very exciting prospect. Mm. Now, you chose the Hanover Theater. Yes. So mm -hmm. how'd that come about? We looked at several venues in the mm -hmm. city, and we fell in love with the Hanover. Um, it is a beautiful It's theater. reputation in the region, um, its facilities, and its management. We couldn't have been happier to have selected the Hanover as our first, select, our first theater. Now, tell me and our viewers at home what the festival um, 
what the details are. There will be a four-day festival mm -hmm. starting September 14th to the 17th, and um, it will be approximately 22 to 25 films in 14 time slots. Wow. With opening night on Thursday night. What a huge undertaking. Now, Thursday night is the opening night. That's on the 14th. Mm -hmm. And do you know some, can you tell me some of the movies that might be going? Yes, to, opening night possible? film will be Something Like Summer. It's from the book, Something Like Summer. So there's a big following. What kind of movie, what genre it's is that? It's a musical. A musical? Yes, it's a musical. Very La La Land? I call it gay La La Land. <laughs> so um, there's a lot of twist in it. It's a beautiful romantic story. Um, when I saw it, I immediately knew that this was the festival to have it in. Oh, fantastic. Now, that's your opening night show. That's our opening night show. Now, where, where's that film coming from? It's coming from California. Mm -hmm. It's an American film. And they actually had their film debut in Australia. Not in California? Not in California. That's interesting. So it was filmed in, Calif it was filmed in California, yeah. but the debut was in Australia. And the North American premiere was in Philadelphia. Wonderful. Now, um, what are some of the other films that you might be able to tell us about? There's a Trinidad Tobago film. Okay. That is a beautiful film. It's about this young boy who gets involved with an older man who has who gets involved in the carnival down there and he plays the devil in the carnival. Who the older man or the, the older younger boy? boy? The young boy plays the devil yeah. in the carnival. So there's a lot of catharsis in the movie and how they, they grow and the relationships grow how and it evolves. How it and evolves. And what's interesting is it's homosexuality is frowned on in that country. So they selected this film to play in their festival. In their festival? Yes. So it was the first time an LGBTQ film was shown in Trinidad. Do you know what the reaction was? It was very well received. Oh, that's so yes. wonderful to hear. So we're excited to have it here as a centerpiece film. Wonderful. And what's the name of that one? Play the Devil. Play the Devil. Yes. And um, what's the, well, you, you mentioned one other film that might be Yes. Yeah. There's a British film called B&B. &B. It's a thriller. That's, yeah, that's the one I want yes. to yeah. Yes. It's and you just watched uh, this recently, correct? I just watched it last night, as a matter of fact. Uh, was it such a thriller that you had a hard time sleeping? <laughs> it, it had a lot of twists and turns in it. Yep. And um, it's about this, this couple that goes to a b, b a year after they were denied a bed because they were a gay married couple. Uh-huh, yeah. And so they went back and they confronted this, this innkeeper. Innkeeper. And um, it's a lot of twists and turns. Is it a whodunit kind of thing? Yes. Or is, it, is it very Alfred Hitchcocky? Yes. Hitchcocky. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. Dude, I wonder if some of our viewers <laughs> even know who Alfred Hitchcock is. That's true. <laughs> you know. I hope they do. Hopefully, we're, we'll be um, in introducing them to some different uh, people. Names from the past. You mentioned um, a potential of um, bringing something to Worcester Center. I hope that happens, too. Yes, we're looking to bring a film to the commons. Mm -hmm called Can't Stop the Music mm -hmm. with Steve Gutenberg and the Village People and Bruce Jenner. And now, there are probably some people at home who have never even heard of the Village People. I hope there aren't, but there <laughs> probably are. And, uh, well, if you need a great host for that event, this guy right <laughs> here is a fabulous host. Thank I you. just attended a fundraiser, um, and you were the host. And you, not only were you fantastic, you looked amazing, but you. you were I love that quick rapier wit. I love that. I, and it c comes so easy to you. You're just a naturally, natural performer? Um, I think it, uh, for me, I, I just actually recently was explaining what being on stage does for me. Um, I'm personally a very shy, kind of don't like the limelight. But um, when I get on stage like that, my mindset is I get to give that one moment of happiness and excitement to an audience. You and do. And so when I get to walk away from that, yes. um, I feel like I've completed or I've accomplished something. So I guess on stage I'm a different person, especially when, you know, as you saw me, I was in a blue wig and... Yeah. Uh, it, know, is so it almost like your alter ego kind of thing? I think I, think yeah. I could agree with that. Um, you know, it, it, it definitely is me outside of my comfort zone. Right. So definitely. But, but it's so effortless for you. That's the amazing thing. Um, yeah. I'm glad it comes across that way. It does. It, it absolutely a, does. I've yeah. succeeded in what I tried to do. So, yeah. Thank and you. Just on a quick side note, I saw you once do Lady Gaga. And <laughs> I'm telling you right now, 
you blew everyone in the audience away. You were phenomenal as Gaga. No, oh, thank Please you. Please do that again. Uh, well, we'll see. Um, we've got some things coming up. We're begging. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if you need a host for your potential uh, show at the Commons, there you go. That's right. right. Now, can you tell our viewers at home um, how they can find out more information and um, maybe some details about the film festival coming up in September, starting on September 14th? Yes. Correct. Okay. Yes, the way to find us is go to our Facebook page. Okay. At QFlix Worcester. All right. And QFlix we also, Worcester. It's that QFlix easy. Worcester. Okay. It's that easy. And the, we also have a website, QFlixWorcester.com. Yeah. And you'll be updating it all the time. We'll be updating it all the yeah. time. With our, once our program is locked in, and we can announce it, it'll be right on the page. Fantastic. I'm very excited personally, and you know I'll be attending opening night because yes. this is such a a wonderful, like, historic event for Worcester, honestly. It really is. We're looking to make this a yearly event and let it grow. I love that. We're really ex excited also that um, we're able to announce that Niche Hospitality has um, agreed to sign on as one of our corporate sponsors. So getting the community and established businesses that are already here in Worcester mm -hmm. on board with this is really exciting for us because it shows the support for the LGBT yep. community. So thank you, Niche. Yes. yes. All right. Thank you. We'll be back with more New England Pride TV right after this. New England Pride TV is brought to you by the Hanover Theater for the Performing Arts, Remax Vision, Bay State Savings Bank, Safe Homes, Joseph Gonzalez Dofrain, Boston Wedding Photographer, Paul Chase in Interior Design. Nuovo Restaurant, Creative Cabinets, Dr. Frank P. Fetchner Plastic Surgery, Fallon Health, Making Our Communities Healthy, and Crown Bakery. Hey kids, I'm here with our next guest, who is the newest team member of New England Pride TV. Nathan Mana is here, so welcome Nathan, yay! Thank you, <laughs> excited to be here. Nathan is uh, going to be our Youth Pride Correspondent, which I figured um, after all this time filming, uh, my 60 year old ass is tired <laughs> and I needed to jump start it with some youth in this organization, so I reached out to Nathan, and he is going to be helping us with some wonderful, you're going to help us with some youth events throughout New England. Yeah. You're going to um, just kind of like update us, right? Yeah. And, and the reason that I'm saying this update us is because one of the things that um, really kind of bothered me, and it's my own insecurities, I guess, is, and you know where I'm going with this, right? <laughs> okay. So the word queer. Uh, is is just so foreign to me being used in such a positive way lately. Because when I was growing up, if I was called queer, it was usually accompanied by a beer bottle being thrown at my head from a truck. Mm -hmm. And that's how I think of the word queer. And I grew up with that kind of stigma. And now, as time goes on and things evolve, this wonderful youth generation has just taken the word and owned it. Yeah, so like we've taken it and it's almost become like an umbrella term because I'm sure you've heard like where people complain about it, it's like LGBTQ alphabet soup <laughs> but now it's like... <laughs> yes, I will, I will confess that sometimes we will have to cut on this show because I will say LGBTQ but I'll say it out of order or wrong or yeah, or but alphabet yeah, soup. So like with queer being there, like identify it like a, identifies everyone else in the mix, yeah. so that you don't just have to like keep going on and on, and so it's just sort of, it's like a nice term now. It's it's you owned it, so it's it's no longer an insult, right? And I love the fact that you just own it. And uh, one of the things that I first saw uh, that kind of really almost made me stop and really almost be a little bit confused was because. <laughs> There was an advertisement for a queer dance, mm -hmm. like in big capital pink letters, queer dance. And I'm like, wow, they've come so far. And you have come so far, and I'm, and I'm so happy that you have. And things like that are the kind of things that you're going to help us keep 
updated with, right? I will. Now you belong to, or I think you're the head of a youth, youth organization now, correct? Yeah, I'm the chair for Worcester Youth Pride, yeah. which is a subcommittee of Worcester Pride. And so like, we're sort of charged with like, planning and executing like, all the youth-oriented events. Because like, what happens is, so like in Worcester, there's only the mailbox for like, a gay space, and right. that's 21 plus. And that's 21 plus. Uh, one of the things, when, it, when we first had our, our initial meeting, mm -hmm. Uh, we were we was talking about things that would be good for the show with were you involved and when you said that on Worcester Pride on September 9th I think yeah that you can't go to the block party I can't it's 21 plus so <laughs> it's 21 plus and yet there's a huge youth culture right um, that that are excluded from that mm -hmm. So who started the, the, pride organi uh, the youth pride organization? So it started about four years ago with Leanne Quackenbosch. Okay. And so she stepped down last September. Uh -huh. And so I got elected to fill the role. Okay. And so like under me, we started with, uh, in May, we had our first youth pride prom. You had a youth pride prom. I love that. Mm. I love yeah. that. It was just like amazing seeing like all these young people who they might not get like a chance to go to their prom for whatever reason. Yeah, or don't feel comfortable bringing someone right. they, they want to bring to their prom. And getting to go to ours, yes. I mean, that was actually our biggest event so far, ever. Now, these youth proms, are, are they happening all around in different cities? And uh... They are. So, like, I know Boston Pride has one. And I think Rhode Island Pride does one through, they actually have, like, a separate organization, Youth Pride. Okay. That runs, like, completely autonomously from Rhode Island Pride. It's two separate organizations. Okay. Right. Yeah. And, um... I wish I had known about Youth Pride. I could have played the staunchy school teacher who, <laughs> who stood there and make sure you didn't dance too close. <laughs> Get your ruler out. Really, <laughs> I am really showing my age here. Huh? <laughs> no, you're not. But, but um, you're just saying that because you work for me now. <laughs> <laughs> Don't fire me. So uh, now, after, after you had Youth Pride, uh, you had one last year? Right. So we have... And you had one again this mm -hmm. year? And yeah, so we're looking to like expand our events and have more offerings. Because I mean, Worcester's a college town, so right, right. there's so many different ways to like connect with the community. And you had an even bigger turnout this year than last year. Right. That's wonderful. I love hearing that. Mm. It's such a positive um, event. I, I absolutely love that. Now, uh, what other things might be coming up for Youth Pride organization? And do you get involved with other cities? Do you do things together? Uh, so we don't do a lot together, just because of like the different like locations and everything. Right, right, right. right. And a lot of our events sort of happen simultaneously. <laughs> oh, okay. So like the proms are happening like within a week of each other, so right. that makes it hard to like collaborate. Right. right. But so for like Worcester Youth Pride, we have on September 9th our dance coming up. So you have a dance on the same day as Worcester Pride. Right. Okay. So after Pride, you then go to your to our dance. What's right. the, what's the age group for your dance? Uh, 16 to 22. Okay. So to sort of capture like the like high school, college yeah. level. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wonderful. Now where does that take place? So it happens actually at the YWCA. Mm -hmm. It's on Salem Square. And I, I'm I'm going to be a total nerd right now. And I'm, is it kind of like do people like dress up like prom, or is it just more a casual dance? Or uh, so our prom is more like dressy. Yeah. But so our September dance is more like casual. Come as you are. Mm -hmm. And so we actually have a theme this year. It's like a sort of it's called Out with the Times. Out with the times? Right, so it's almost like a battle of the decades type of thing. Okay. So, so if like participants wanted to dress as their favorite decade, that'd okay. be really cool. All right, and what's your decade? I'm curious now. I'm not sure yet. Have you, okay. I'm still deciding. The 80s were awesome. <laughs> I'm thinking <laughs> For some, me, anyway. <laughs> I'm thinking more like 1790s France. Oh, oh my God. Are you talking like powdered wig and the whole bit? Maybe. I mean, oh have God, you seen uh, Madonna's that. performance at the VMAs like of course. 20 years ago of Vogue? Yes. Like just that entire look, maybe. All right. All right. Maybe you can, maybe you can do a remote uh, shoot for New England Pride TV at oh, the dance. Oh, that would be cool. Wouldn't that be cool? Like go live with Facebook, I think. You could go live with Facebook, absolutely. Yeah. Um, now, if anybody wants to find out information about your organization, like uh, Youth Pride, how, how would they find you? So they can find us on Facebook at yep. Worcester Youth Pride. Okay. And so they can also email us at youthprideworcester at gmail.com. Wonderful. Now, how, how, do, how do people like... Is, do you have meetings once a month? Do you have meetings once a week? Uh, do you have meetings at all? Oh, so we actually have quite a few meetings. <laughs> <laughs> so we meet about every other week. And so there's events on the Facebook page that tell when it is, where it's happening and everything. Okay. So we actually, 
uh, have quite a few meetings coming up because of like the September dance and everything and needing right, to plan for right, that. Right, right, right. So we might even meet weekly, I'm not sure yet. Wonderful. It is just a joy having you on our team. And I appreciate being here. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay, we will be back with more New England Pride right after this. I just have to set up this clip that's coming up next. It's, it was so cute. I was walking the streets in Worcester one day. Well, I wasn't actually walking the streets. I was on, Are we on live? We're on live, yeah. Uh, hi! I, I, was, I was walking on a sidewalk. I wasn't walking the streets. Those days are long gone. And this really sweet, sweet lady walked up to me. She said, can I have a minute of your time? And I said, I don't have any money. She said, no. <laughs> I, I need to tell you that I watch New England Pride TV. And I, she thanked us for the show. And uh, I asked her what her favorite part of the show was, and this is what she said. So here's the real setup for that clip. Dela Page here, and this lovely woman just told me that she loves watching New England Pride. And tell everybody at home what your favorite segment is. My favorite is Lady Sabrina. And tell I me why. I love her. She always gets to the right part of the question, and she has a simple uh, solution that makes perfect sense. It's not too hard to do. And I think she's extremely sympathetic and supportive of the, of the people she advises. I love that. And tell everybody what your name is. Kathy Perkins. Thanks for watching New England Pride I TV. I love New England Pride TV. <laughs> Thanks, it's my baby. favorite show. Now it's time for Lady Sabrina. Hey, Dale. Hey, everyone. It's me, Miss Lady Sabrina. And we're back with another letter. This one comes all the way from Arkansas. Uh, Dear Miss Lady Sabrina, I just ended my 8th grade year and I'm moving into high school with some people I know who know about me. I'm very nervous about going into high school with that kind of reputation. How would I overcome it? Thank you, Jay. Okay, well the question that you ask is a complicated one, but we're going to get to it. Hey Jay, there are a few factors that come into play when considering coming out in high school. Some things that I'm about to say, some may agree with, and others may not. First is location. There are some places that are much more hostile for our kind. So safety is by far our first concern. You have to assess if you will have the proper community support before taking that step. You know, I'm all for living out loud. <laughs> but not at the risk of your safety. You know, if you have that in place, then you must pick a handful of friends who you trust to come out to first. You know, since you didn't mention family, we'll assume that your family is on board with your true self. One of your goals will be to get a core group of friends that you can trust and rely on. There will always be people who won't accept you. There's no way to force open a closed mind. So save your energy for the people worthy of it. Understand that even for the cookie cutter straight students, there are critics and you will be no different. Insecure people will always be little others to make up for their own shortcomings. One of your other goals is not to look for validation in the naysayers. Our natural instinct is to try and convince the critics that we're worthy. We need to resist that urge and use that energy for more self-fulfilling endeavors. You know, like my grandmother always said, when you walk into the room, you need to command attention, not demand attention. Look at the things that make you feel good about yourself. Understanding that you're good enough, as is. Lastly, look for community resources and other LGBTQ chapters in your school or area. This will help broaden your social network and give you a sense of belonging. I hope this finds you well, and congratulations on having the courage to be your true self at such a young age. If you need anything else, please write back, and you can always find me on Facebook or anywhere else. Love and light, Lady Sabrina. Let's hear from Out With Joe. Thank you, Dale, on this month's edition of Out With Joe. We're going to take a look at what it's like to break into the comedic realm and acting realm as an LGBT person. Now, joining me is Amy T., Hi, Jeff. comedian Hi. extraordinaire. Good to see you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us here on New England Pride TV. Of course. 
You've been on before, and yeah. it was a little, little bit different with Dale, a different uh, take on this. But this time, uh, we want to talk about breaking into or being in the realm of acting and or uh, comedy as LGBT. First of all, do you build yourself as a gay comedian or a comedian who happens to be gay? I would say just a comedian that happens to be gay. Do you feel that, do you find that you need to make that distinction? I think that if you looked at me, you could probably tell. Right, right. right. You said in the pre-interview, you said, you said, oh, I always get up and address the elephant in the room. Absolutely. Address the elephant in the room so that, you know, cause the audience is wondering, you know, especially when I'm, I'm in a mainstream club, so they're wondering, so why not address it? Yeah. Uh, for, for someone who wants to get into, the, say, the comedian uh, profession at this point, uh, it, is it something that they should be upfront about, or do they just lead their life in, in hey, that happens to be it? Yeah, yeah, I really think that's a personal style. Um, for me, it's just, it's, I talk about it because I talk about being married um, to my wife, and you know, my, my humor is very autobiographical, so it just happens to come out. But I think that's really, a, just depends on you know, your own personal style. If you Have you ever had any pushback or resistance for being openly gay? I wouldn't say resistance so much as like where people have probably tried to give me advice that maybe unsolicited <laughs> exactly um, best you know, kind of advice you, you, right and it's always you know the ones that you want to follow um, but you know maybe not be so so gay on stage but that you narrow what you're able to do you can't only play to that market then right which is their narrow minds not exactly <laughs> exactly is right that, right that makes sense um, so. Uh, you know, you, you say thank you very much, but I can't change who I am, so. Uh, Would you find that it's easier for you to play to a predominantly LGBTQ audience or a straight audience or a mixture? For me, it doesn't, I don't think it really matters, but I feel like um, sometimes the mainstream audience is a lot more fun because you can play into their stereotypes that they have in their mind. Right. Where A lot of material uh, self-writes itself. Exactly, and where, you know, if you're doing a, a gay audience, um, I think they're harder because they. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> they're Amy, a tougher audience. I think I think I do much better in the mainstream audience. All right. Well, we're against the clock here for our time, but I want to thank you for joining us here on New England Pride TV. And where can people find you on? Um, you can find me at experimentalcomedy.com. My 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 website has all my list of shows that I'm in, in New England. All right, there you go. I'm Joe Mangiacotti for New England Pride TV. Now back to the show. And now it's time for our segment called Pride Pets. Um, in the past, we've done dogs and horses and giraffes, but this month is going to be about kittens, kittens and cats. For all those cat lovers out there, this month I would like to introduce you to People for Animals League. The People for Animals League is literally a home away from home for cats and their care. The cats have access to condos, window seats, couches, cat trees, and sunlight. There's plenty of room for playing, running, climbing, resting, and of course, eating. The limited cage environment greatly reduces stress levels and keeps the cats healthy and happy with regular exercise and socialization until they find their forever homes and maybe one of their forever homes will be with you. You can contact or find out more information about this organization by going to contact People for Animals League at 774-745-8041 or email peopleforanimals at charter.net or www.peopleforanimals.com. Help one of these pets find their forever home. Hey, thanks for watching another episode of New England Pride TV. We're going to end the show the way we always do by saying, please don't be afraid to shine your light because you, you may, may be lighting, lighting the way, way for someone, someone in need. need. That's right. Until next time, thanks for watching. You got New England pride, show us You've got New England pride Stand up, shout out, show us You got New England pride, show us You've got New England pride mm -hmm. New England pride